Ignition sequence start. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition and lift off. Vehicles pushing downrange. Stage one, London Lake deployed. Uh, that was as smooth as I'd seen it. Uh, we had phenomenal shots all the way through the landing burn. You heard the sonic booms. This booster has landed for the eighth time. Welcome to my review of my LEGO Falcon 9 Block 5 mock. You may possibly recognize this mock because I have actually put multiple mocks from various people together and added my own personal tweaks to make this the best looking, most accurate Block 5 Falcon 9 I possibly can. So, as you can see, it is very tall. It can't fit in frame. So I made this neat little stand for it. But I have also realised that it still won't fit in frame. Well, it appears that this is the best I could possibly do. But in fact, in length, it is approximately 21 inches. So it's very big. Well, I think the best way to go through this mock first is to just list some of the facts. As of the moment, it has launched 122 times, which is quite a lot. Um, the Falcon 9 has... Uh, the capability of lifting 22,800 kilograms to low Earth orbit. It has nine Merlin 1D sea level engines and one Merlin vacuum optimized engine. Now, as you can see, the Falcon 9 has four hypersonic re entry grid fins to help it steer itself to the drone ships or landing pads. In real life, this uh, rocket is about 70 metres high, so it's very tall, but it's not as high as the Saturn V. In comparison, it's about half the size, so... I've just done a Google search and found that this is what the Falcon 9 would look like next to the Saturn V, so just over half the height of the Saturn V. So the best way to do this is to show you physically the model, what happens. So all nine Merlin engines will ignite and take the rocket up to the intended height, past max Q. So stages will separate and the Falcon 9 booster will do a boost back burn and head back towards the right spot to begin its re-entry. From then on, the Falcon 9 will use RCS thrusters, reaction control thrusters, to realign the vehicle into the correct position. Then these four hypersonic grid fins will deploy for re-entry. Craft will realign itself and complete an entry burn. After that, when uh, the effects of Earth's atmosphere come in and there is actually thick air particles that the craft can use its grid fins to actually move around in, uh, the grid fins will move in various ways to realign the vehicle into the correct position for the landing. On your left hand side of the screen, you can see a Falcon 9 on the Transporter 2 mission returning. You can see the grid fins slowly pivoting on their joints to realign the vehicle towards the pad. At this point in the mission, the fairings on the second stage will deploy to reveal the payload, which mine is just a normal standard satellite slash space probe. I just put it together in 10 minutes. So the payload will sit on the top of the second stage 
and the second stage, depending on where the satellite needs to go, will um, will have various sorts of manoeuvres and one second burns to get it to the right orbit. Also, here's a closer look at the vacuum optimised Merlin engine. It's much bigger because it is vacuum optimised, so the bell nozzle is much larger to be more effective in the vacuum of space. I've just attached this using a simple black rod piece on the bottom of the second stage. At this point, the Falcon 9 would be heading back towards the landing zone uh, at a very fast speed, using only the grid fins to manoeuvre it. Some of the Merlin engines will ignite just before the landing to cushion it. And as the engines ignite, the landing legs will deploy just before the landing. Now, I have added these landing legs at the bottom of the vehicle. But to make them more accurate when they deploy, I have added these struts which hold the landing legs in position while on the vehicle. Now the only problem with this is this should be black but unfortunately I searched everywhere and I could not find this piece in black so I have to use grey for now. And there we have it, our landed Falcon 9 booster. At this point in the mission, the payload will separate from the second stage of the vehicle. The payload, uh, depending on what it is, will go off and deploy whatever it is, satellite, probe, whatever. Sadly, the second stage cannot be reused, unlike the fairings and the Falcon 9 booster. So, what they do instead is this will realign itself and do a deorbit burn and deorbit and break up in the Earth's atmosphere safely. And there we have it, our Falcon 9 model. So, now I will go more into the detail of the actual build itself. So, I very much enjoyed building this model. The slight problem I had with it occurred with my OCD. I originally had the logo in the middle of these panels, but then I realised that it would be in the middle in line with the landing leg. I looked at a picture of Falcon 9 and that is not actually accurate. So it was either move the sticker or realign the legs on the weird angle. And I was going to just move the sticker which I did. And then I thought, oh wait, that affects how the payload splits open. That means that the fairings are going to look wonky. So what I had to do is come up with a weird building technique. And this weird building technique is on the second stage, if you saw this sort of rim. So what I had to do is this actually rotates. So basically what happens is in here, there is a rod piece anchored down because it has that little sort of nozzle on the end. Um, don't really know how to explain it. And I put that in and like a clam, I shut this over the top, put this brick over and put these bricks around it. Then I can use the bottom of this, it can go in there like that. So that allows me to build this on an angle without it being secure and just falling off. This is the piece I was talking about when I said uh, a nozzle on the end of a rod. So the clamshell uh, sort of went over this and meant it was anchored in. So thanks for watching and please don't forget to subscribe.